Okay, you're currently looking at Taylor Swift tickets. That's For you. <laughs> For you. No, no, no. For my wife. There we go. And hopefully one of her friends and not me. <laughs> but, yeah, I feel that. I used to like Taylor Swift. Okay, so let's, so we just got off the phone with... Connie. Okay. So we just got off the phone with Connie. Hey Connie, how are you? It's Bill. I'm fine, how are you? I'm doing good. We talked through <laughs> some options. It looks sounds like she won't go below $100,000. Uh, I, I think I told you and told him $100,000 is the cheapest I would go. Okay. But she was open to some sort of partnership potentially, mm -hmm. some upside potential if we can come in. Maybe we come in lower on the purchase and then show her some upside on the back end uh, based on some of our numbers. So yep. she also uh, proposed potentially like us investing in the project while she's flipping it because yep. she wants money to go use on her farm. So Correct. now we understand her motive. We understand what's happening. We understand some of her needs um, we could do um, so we have like the ABC offer I feel like again still the A is like our cash offer this is what we can pay the B is she partners with us we do the work we renovate it she has some upside on the back end so we offer less than a hundred thousand mm -hmm. but show her how potentially she could make more than a hundred thousand on the back if we make a lot more money than we think yep. and then the third option would be we partner with her let her do the project hopefully you can go follow around do some work on things like that talk to the contractors and maybe manage some of it um, where you get some experience and things like that you raise the capital potentially for the project that she takes and then we make more money on the back end we basically make our money on the profit on the back end where we Correct. could split it or structure it however we want on the back those are the three th ways that i see there's a potential deal here um, what do you think? All right, I have some mixed thoughts. Okay. So I, I think that my safest option would probably be B. Okay, which is what? Where we come in at a more reasonable number to start, you know, offer some type of profit share over a certain amount. I feel like that mitigates our costs. We're not putting out too much up front. And if it hits like she thinks she can, we'll still make our money, possibly in a little bit more, and she gets happy as well. Option A. I don't see it. I don't feel comfortable coming in at 100,000. No, definitely not. And I'm not saying that. I'm saying we just make a cash offer. Like, hey, okay. here's what we can pay. So here's what we can pay cash, where we both go our separate ways. You're will, and it, it's going to be an offer lower than her 100K. But whatever we feel comfortable with making an offer on, especially based on like kind of looking at the comp that she's setting right now. So, and the only the only new piece of information I have is not necessarily like the exact area, but just what is the demand for houses at a certain price point. So it is low ceilings in the, those areas. So that 16 days under contract, full ask. What it's telling me is that kind of lower end market, they still need houses. There's still a demand. For so going back to this, the third option, I don't know that I fully understand in okay. how I would make money off of it and how I would come up with that money. So the third option is basically we partner with her mm -hmm. instead of her partnering with us. We, we've seen some of her projects, we've talked to her for a while, I would still want to get to know her a little bit, make sure that we trust her, these kind of mm -hmm. things. Basically, she would renovate the property okay. and she said her people are kind of available, she needs some cash to go put in her farm. It's basically like partnering with a seller where the seller's actually going to fix it up instead of partnering a seller where we're going to fix it up and split the profits on the back end. So let's say we bought the house for $100,000 from her. Yep. So what we would do is she would still own the house. So what we can do is we don't buy the house. So there's no closing cost on the front end. She owns it outright cash. So what we could do is we could put a $100,000 mortgage on it. So effectively what she's doing is a cash out refinance on that property from us. So we would put a $100,000 mortgage on the property. Okay. She can't sell it without paying us off our mortgage. And instead of getting interest, what we could do is we could take a 50-50 split in the profit off the off the um, flip. So basically what she would do is, let's say she puts $40,000 into it, like she said. Yep. We buy it for 100, she puts $40,000 into it. She sells it for 235, maybe there's $70,000 of profit in there. And we say, okay, you pay our mortgage, our $100,000 back to us, and we split 50-50 on that profit. So we make $35,000, you make $35,000. What I would do is I would raise $100,000 from a private lender and say 8% interest or something, where it's a balloon payment when the property sells, we put a mortgage on the property, and at $100,000, the interest accrues until we sell. We sell the property, the private lender gets their $100,000 back, plus, let's say, $4,000, because we held it for six months, right? 8% of 4,000, or 100,000 yes. is 8,000. Half of that in six months is 4,000. So we give them their 104, we take 31. We make the same amount of money that we would make if we have to flip it. We don't have to do the work. She has the contractor, she has people in that area. You can learn alongside of her while doing it. 
You can walk the property, we can talk through what's happening. It's basically a JV, a joint venture with another flipper. I do that all the time right now. Mm -hmm. It's not really you getting your first flip done, but there's profit there, there's money to be made, there's an opportunity potentially. Does that make sense? All it time? does. So I don't want to confuse you at the end. What I basically say is I'd raise the money, we put it in, let her do what she does really well. And the nice part about that is she probably can renovate the house cheaper, cheaper than we can. Because she has her people. She has people that she knows that she works with. Where our problems are probably going to be is contractors ripping us off, not doing great work. Yep. We're down there all the time. It's a bit of a nightmare in the beginning. She's getting out of the business of flipping houses, going to work on the farm. Her people are going to need work. Maybe we can come in and say, yeah. hey, we want to do another project. And then she likes working with us. Maybe she gives us that other house on 6th that she has or Sunset or whatever mm -hmm. it was. And then maybe she brings us referrals and she's like, hey, I don't even really need my contractors anymore. They're working on my farm. Now they're working here. Yep. They don't have a lot to do. Do you guys want to use them? What I see anytime I'm looking at this stuff is what kind of relationship can I build? Is it a long-term relationship? Are there things that I can do? It sounds like you prefer option B and I actually prefer option C. In a vacuum after hearing you describe it, option C sounds great. It just the easiest and lowest risk way to make additional funds. Yeah, I think we'll make less money. So, but we could make more money with yeah. less risk, right? The question that you have to answer is, do I want that to be the first project that I work on? Is it okay with me? Or do I want to go do this on my own? So then what I'm thinking the nice thing about this is, assuming I could come up with the funds, I could then, we could then go right back to doing what we're doing in well, finding another property. We are gonna do what we're doing, finding another property, while that's being worked on. That's what I'm saying. So like, we're not gonna wait till it's done. Right away, we're gonna go find another property. And that's the problem that most flippers have. They work on one project at a time, and then they get done that project, it takes them another three to six months to find the next one. So regardless of project, or of options A, B, or C, the second that's under contract, we're on the search again. Kind of, like if it's option A or B and we buy it and we're working on it, we're gonna get to work on finding contractors, getting bids, yep. all that. We need to stay focused there. And we can still like look at more properties, make offers, those kind of things. But I would say where you're at right now in your probably limited ability to raise a ton of money. Totally. Do a bunch of projects. You have a full-time job managing this on the side. My recommendation would be we get this up and running, but we don't wait until it's under contract and sold before we look gotcha. at the next one. So how do I pitch that? How do I acquire the 100,000 from people? Uh, so, hey, I got a rehab project that we're going to be working on and um, you know, continue to the 500K challenge type structure. So I have to literally raise this from friends people family, in the network. Friends, family, warm network, people in your world, somebody who's looking to make a better return than what's in the stock market right now, crypto, bank, CDs, treasury bonds, anywhere. Okay. Something along those lines. I would go into your phone and send a message to the last 50 people that you texted with and send them that. They pretty much all work for or with seven figure. So they might be interested in making double digit returns. Okay. Could be a conflict of interest in some of those, but um, the last 50 people that you texted with, we don't even have 50 people that work for us. We don't even have 50 people that I've texted with. Okay, well. Uh, I am not a social person. More. This is very true. Um, keep talking. Okay. And like, like right now, go make a post right now. I will. No, right now. Go. <laughs> Everybody says, I will, I will, I will, I will. Everybody watching this video is saying, I will. Like, no, go, just go do it. Like, go do it, get uncomfortable, do it. It doesn't even matter what it says, just go do it. There we go. And hey, if you're watching this video, you go make a post. Say, hey, would you, I, I've got a project coming up or I just got into real estate. I'm excited about um, starting to flip houses. Would you be interested in part? I'm always looking for partners that bring the money and I'll bring the work. You don't have to deal with tenants and toilets and all this stuff and I'll bring the work and, uh, and we can partner up on some of these deals. Just post something like that. Fire. Poop emoji. The poop emoji. <laughs> Ice cream? <laughs> no. I want to edit this. You I wanna... can't. It, it, it's not coming back. Okay. Just leave the ice cream. It's good. It's like it's like money flowing down over the top of the cone. They're like, oh, there's lots of money coming. Potential double digit returns. This looks awesome. Um, yeah, there you go. That's good. Put it in the comment. All right. On the next video, we are going to make an offer to Connie and get this deal under contract.